All right, so in today's video, I am building a miter saw station. Uh, I, in the past, I've had a miter saw station. I took my miter saw and moved it over to a mobile cart and got rid of the station in my shop. Uh, and since doing that, I really miss it for two reasons. Number one, the dust containment. Uh, and number two, the storage that you get around the miter saw in the shop furniture itself, which is really cool and I need more of. So I'm really excited about today's build, but today's video is sponsored by Quick Screws, and they sent me this square drive pocket hole kit, which is really nice because these screws are specifically made for pocket holes, and they're also square drive, which never strip out, uh, which is a, also a cool thing. Uh, but they have screws, bits, anchors, and a lot more, so be sure and check out the link in the description and check them out. So off camera, I went ahead and broke down the plywood uh, into the parts that I needed according to the plan. Now the plan is linked below if you're interested in building this for yourself or you can go to the website article where I, where I provide more details and links and the plans will be there as well. For this project, I pretty much just used pocket holes. Probably 90% of this project is pocket holes. And having this kit was really nice because all of my screws were there together. Uh, and so it just went really fast. Now, the bigger pieces that you see here, that, those are gonna be my cabinets, my drawers and then the pieces on the back against the wall at the top and bottom are the support pieces that will give me the distance between each of the cabinet sides that I need, but also will allow me to screw into the wall uh, and secure this. Now the top piece is a three quarter inch piece of plywood. Uh, not really typical of most miter saw stations you might see. Uh, a lot of those will be uh, built separately as far as two cabinets on the sides and then the miter saw will be dropped down in the middle. I'm, and that's to give them support on each side of the miter saw. Uh, but I'm actually gonna build my tables up to the miter saw, uh, but I'll get more into that in here in just a minute. So in an effort to contain as much dust as possible, I wanna have a front on this miter saw station, uh, basically just enclosing the, the miter saw as much as I can. Now those two panels that you saw me just install those are three quarter inch pieces of plywood and those are cut out to allow me to turn in either direction at 45 degrees. Now, here I'm cutting out uh, the front panels or the outer panels uh, out of quarter inch plywood and these panels will allow me to uh, have the saw in a 90 degree position and make 90 degree cuts. And so if I wanted to move my saw in either direction at an angle, I would remove one side or the other as far as the outer panels and make my cuts that way. Uh, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that here in just a few minutes. Uh, but this was a trial and error process. I mean, I had to get a piece, piece of cardboard and uh, move my saw and then cut a little bit and try it again. But as you can see, it works pretty good. Okay, so up to this point, I've got the box built around the miter saw. Now these inner panels are secured to the box and the openings that you see is to allow for 45 degree cuts. And so I don't have to take these off or anything or move these. Uh, I've got the clearance that I need for the miter saw to move freely. Now the out, outer panels is made out of quarter inch plywood. I've got some washers glued in place to uh, connect to the magnets and that's what will hold that in place and those openings will give me my 90 degree uh, position to be able to make 90 degree cuts and that is just to provide maximum dust collection um, inside there and hopefully will ca capture most of that dust now the tables that i'm doing uh, making for each side of the miter saw is just three quarter inch plywood uh, just simple little legs uh, little pieces of wood that i've put pocket holes i'm just a attaching them to the bottom of this tabletop here and then I'll secure this to this cabinet by screwing up through the bottom uh, of this cabinet top uh, into the legs and hold that in place. And I'll have a stop block system in place here with T-track and swing arms and that kind of thing. So I'm going to be doing this other side um, and so I'll kind of show you what my process is there. Okay, so this part's going to be a little bit different for everybody, depending on what miter saw you have. So, like I said earlier, a lot of miter saws will be a, will be built uh, in separate pieces, and the miter saw in the middle will be dropped down to uh, be even with both cabinets on the sides. I wanted to build mine up just for other things 
uh, that I'm going to be including later that you'll see. But these tables are slightly less than what the miter saw is, uh, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch. And the fence is going to be set back, the, the shop made fence that I'm making here will be set back about an eighth of an inch uh, further than what the actual miter saw fence is. Uh, the reason for that is because I want to reference off of the miter saw table and the miter saw fence only and not these shop made tables that I'm making. These tables here are just there for support, uh, to support the long material that I'm cutting and also to catch any cutoffs uh, that I'll cut. Before I move on to making the drawers, I want to make sure that this fence that I just put in and the stop block system is accurate. Uh, so I set the stop block to a certain length and then I checked it, it was good. So moving on to the drawers, I am creating a couple of deep drawers on the top and for the two bottom drawers I'm building uh, trays actually and not drawers. Uh, these two trays on each side are going to hold uh, other tools and the drawers uh, that are going to be on each side at the top will be deep enough to where I can put trays in those uh, and hold various things. So, and the, these two drawer top drawers are just basic construction, uh, butt joints and screws, and that's pretty much it. So there's gonna be two of these and then two trays at the bottom. And that went by really fast as well. Easy cuts, easy assembly. For the two lower pullout trays, uh, it was really simple. These are basically just shallow boxes turned upside down uh, with a drawer front and two triangular support pieces holding it in place. Uh, and I'll store other tools in the shop uh, in these two locations. Now, to trim everything out and also for drawer pulls, I decided to go with a contrasting color. This dark wood, this is Eco Poplar. I picked this up at CD Hardwoods in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, fun fact, the way that it was explained to me is that this is poplar and it's been heat treated. Uh, so it cooked out all of the sugars and sap and turned it this brown color, uh, which is <laughs> really cool because you kind of get this walnut look um, but it doesn't cost as much as walnut and it's not as heavy as walnut. So I had some left over in the shop. I'm going to be adding it to this miter saw station and also the modular shop storage system that you can see behind me here in this scene. Uh, one piece is what my CNC is sitting on and the other piece is a bank of drawers holding a lot of other tools. So that's why I've got extra pulls here. I'm going to be adding it to uh, three pieces of shop furniture kind of give my shop a theme and a similar look across the board. To finish everything I used Mahoney's Walnut Oil uh, which is kind of ironic that this is kind of looks like walnut and I'm using walnut oil but nonetheless it cleaned it up pretty good. I love the color that it gave it and I'm really excited about using this throughout the shop. I used this method throughout the shop to attach the drawer pulls. Uh, obviously for each piece of furniture it's going to be different measurements but I've got a couple of different combination squares set at two different measurements uh, one giving me uh, from left to right and then uh, from uh, the center from top to bottom and then I'll just add glue to the back side of the drawer pull to where it will stick to the drawer front uh, I made a little mark with a pencil as you saw to kind of give me a guide to where, where to kind of put it back and then I'll just double check it with the combination squares again uh, and then tack it in one time uh, on one side with a brad nail uh, and then make sure it's level and then tack the other side with a brad nail and then I'll go in on the back side of the drawer and screw uh, two screws into the drawer pull and it should be pretty secure. Now there are other ways to do drawer pulls. Uh, I'm sure some of you have better ideas uh, but this is just the way that came to me as I was working so that's typically how I work it's just I'm going with the flow here it worked so I just did it throughout the shop and it came out just fine so I've uh, got drawer pulls in the shop now on all of my furniture uh, and now I can move on to the trim For the trim pieces, I ripped some pieces down to about three quarters of an inch thick to go with the three quarter inch plywood, uh, added some glue, and then just tacked everything in place with brad nails. These particular brad nails are painted brown on the end, so you really can't even see them. So everything turned out pretty good.
There are a few upgrades that I want to add to this miter saw station. The first being cubby boxes uh, in the openings that you see on each side of the miter saw just to give me a place to store some pencils and tape measures and that kind of thing. Uh, the second thing is to modify my existing multi-purpose shop cart into a nesting assembly cart. Uh, add my glue, some clamps and that kind of thing uh, and store it there under the miter saw. The third thing is to add extension wings on each side. Some foldable extension wings to support longer pieces of wood. So if you're in need of a miter saw station, check out the website article where I go into more details and provide more links over there. Also, you can find the project plans there. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Check out Quick Screws, uh, the sponsor of this video. And as always, thanks for watching.